Hi, everyone. My name is Kirk Bachman, and welcome back to The Ultimate Dish. In today's episode, we're speaking with Chef Tracy DeWitt, a victorious alum of the Food Network Challenge, having won two gold medals and one silver medal on the show. She has also led gold and silver medal winning teams in two national pastry championships. In 2010, Tracy won the American Culinary Federation Western Regional Pastry Chef of the Year. And in 2011, she competed and won the Competitor's Choice Award for her depiction of the Grand Canyon. Tracy has been a chef educator for nearly 30 years at some of the finest schools in Arizona, including Scottsdale Culinary Institute and Le Cordon Bleu. Today, she is an Escoffier pastry arts chef instructor who supports her students in an inclusive learning environment where all voices are heard and all learning styles are welcome. Join us today as we chat with Chef Tracy about culinary competitions, her journey to teaching, and the pastry trends to watch in 2022. And there she is. Good morning, Tracy. How are you? Hi, Kirk. Hi, how you doing? (laughs) Thanks for having me. Oh, gosh. Can I just tell you, first of all, it's amazing to see you. I have no idea where the time goes. Where do the years go? They've been kind to you. Can I just say right off the bat? And number one, you get an A plus as a teacher that resonates. I know an A plus for your preparation for our chat today. Can I tell you, I am blown away. I've never had so many notes and comments sent my way (laughs) by a guest but I am not surprised. Always the teacher, always the pastry chef. Your mise en place is spectacular. How's life in Arizona? It's great. I mean, I sent you uh, some, a lot of notes yesterday because I wanted to know (laughs) how much I love teaching. I mean, you know that teaching is my bag. Yeah, it's your um, jam. (laughs) Yeah, like the one-on-one with students is what I live for. And we you know, we closed classes yesterday and I got to speak with some students one-on-one and that just filled my heart up with joy. It gave me, um, you know, that push you need as a teacher to keep going. So yeah. things are great here. Fantastic. And I love that. That keeps you going, right? 30 years in mm-hmm. front of students, always on stage. And we'll get mm-hmm. to the stage in a minute, but <laughs> it, it, it never changes for you, right? Because the class is always changing, the, the challenges, the opportunities constantly moving in front of you, right? Yeah, yeah, especially with uh, post-pandemic uh, online learning, right? So online yeah. education has is, is turned out to be a miracle for so many people and um, to hear the testimony from my students of how much they love being able to embrace their passion for cuisine and pastries um, that never thought they would be able to attend a school because they don't live near a school and yeah. they don't want to leave their family and they can't leave their family. I mean, they're, you know, sometimes many families living under one roof. And so the, um, I'm really glad to be able to finally have that learning environment that is more broad and open to all learning styles and getting, you know, being inclusive to include everybody in my classroom that never thought they could get there before, you know, people who were watching me on TV or were uh, my students before. I actually had a student in my class who I had at Le Cordon No, Blue. what yes, are the at chances? Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I was like, Lee, Leon, I was like looking at the name going, man, that looks familiar. And then I texted him. No, I think I called him on a Friday. I just, hey, you haven't been in class. What's going on? (laughs) And uh, (laughs) he's like, chef, it's me. You remember me? And I was like, I thought your name sounded familiar. Well, get to class, okay? (laughs) You know, know, not on the the script. So, you know, I'm going to challenge you because I know you prepped a lot. But um, coming back to that remote learning, coming out of the pandemic, all of that, how was it for you many, many years as a in-person um, in front of students, uh, chef instructor, right? How was that transition for you? I, I know that you love it. Uh, that's obvious, but what were, what were some of the challenges or, or easy opportunities for you? I mean, the biggest challenge is when your internet goes out. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and, that's, and fair. Fil- that's fair. That's and, fair. And, yeah. and filming in my kitchen because we couldn't go to the, the corporate office or the studios, you know, everything was shut down. 
I was dealing with, I had no idea that lawnmowers and, and uh, yeah. alarms and there was construction <laughs> down the street. And I was like, God, this is, this is hard, you know, to create the perfect um, virtual world to bring yeah. people into my kitchen and into my living room and into my office um, so that they can get to know me better and I can share my knowledge with them. So the technology yeah. has been my biggest challenge. I love the way. The the fact that you said perfect, right? Because have you learned as I have that it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be organic. It can be real. It's okay. If you hear a little doggy, you know, barking in the back, um, we've, we've grown accustomed to it. Right. Yeah. But jackhammers, I mean, I don't know. I had to draw, I had to draw the line. So I literally went across the street and asked them, could, could you stop jackhammering for like one hour? You know, oh, they were I like, love that. They were I love like, that. no, we're done at five. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so um, the house is done now across the street, so we can go back to filming. But good, 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 <laughs> good. Hey, I have to ask. So Arizona is is that Camelback? Um, oh, right here behind mountain you? behind yes. you. Yeah, that yeah. is Camelback Mountain. It. Uh, I love it. It's the been praying many... monk here. Yeah, on the yeah. top of the mountain up there. It's a gorgeous, yes. gorgeous painting. I ha I haven't Thank been you. there um, in many moons, but I can remember, um, you know, climbing around there when I used to visit you guys down there in Scottsdale. You know who was on the show the other day? Oh my gosh, I forgot to who? tell you, John Paul. John Paul beat me to it. Oh, <laughs> hi, John Paul. <laughs> just barely, just barely. Following um, your footsteps, John Paul. <laughs> uh, it was great. It was great to great to chat with him for sure. But um, hey, let's let's dive into. Um, you uh falling in love with pastry falling in love with food falling in love with teaching i think i read somewhere that you you fell in love with the art of making pastries preparing pastries during a a trip to paris um cooking wasn't your first passion but was it paris that sold you yeah well I have been working at a bakery that, I mean, pastries just landed in my lap. I did not think I was, I wasn't like dreaming as a six-year-old to become a pastry chef. Okay. I, I was a, a teenage girl wanting to go to the mall and buy clothes. And so I just needed some, you know, extra cash. I was, you know, 15 when I got my first job at that bakery. Um, but I actually had been working at the library and I, okay. my dad got me that job. And I did not like the job at the library at all. Really quiet. And yeah, I'm not, maybe I'm not quiet enough. <laughs> That's probably what it was. I used to hide in the elevator and, and lock the, the key. So I'd be in between floors and I'd just be like, oh my God. You know, just, just so I could be a little noisy and not just be away from everybody. Where was you know, this? I, where where, where Ridgewood, are we? Ridgewood, New Jersey. We're in Jersey. North Jersey near okay. the George Washington Bridge. What exit? 173, I believe. <laughs> of course, you know. <laughs> yes, I believe it was. Could be 168. <laughs> you know, it depends. You want you forgetting off in Midland Park, Fairlawn, Ridgewood. You know. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, I grew up. I grew up in Bergen County, New Jersey. Um, so a lot of a lot of cooking and baking in the house growing up. No, not a whole lot. I mean, my grandmother made Welsh cookies every year. Those were a tradition. Um, she was from Wales. She came over on the boat, Ellis Island. Um, oh, you know, I don't came, think I knew that. That's great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She, she was, um, she did a lot of lamb. We ate a lot of lamb roast <laughs> growing up <laughs> and, uh, she, my mom wasn't, you know, she, my mom cooked a lot, but she, you know, I didn't feel like she and I spent a lot of time bonding over cooking. Okay. It was more okay. of like, we were just cooking to feed our, ourselves. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, but That's then fair. when I decided, well, actually I was just walking home from school with my friends and we saw this bakery was opening soon and there was a sign in the window you know to come on in and apply and i was like i hate that library job so we, we went <laughs> we went into the bakery where the smells were amazing and the and the pastries were filling the cabinets oh and the, sure you know, they were just getting ready to open they, they were like we need help so they hired all of us on the spot me and two of my friends so we all oh, got wow. jobs okay and after you know couple of them gained 10 pounds. They quit because, you know, we we're eating too many pastries. But my friend Marianne and I, we stuck it out. We, we stayed there for a little while. Um, I secretly made her cater her own birthday party. She'll never forgive me for that. 
but we catered the whole thing. <laughs> she made, thought it was for somebody else. And then the food showed up at her house that night. Oh, I love it. I can't I believe it. you made me make my own pastries. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that, that job led me to the trip to Paris. Um, I ended up working at that bakery for three years, last one standing. And I became, instead of a sales clerk, they trade, they brought me into the back room and showed me how to prepare. Well, what did I start with? Chocolate chip cookies. Okay. What does every baker okay. start with? Chocolate chip yeah. cookies. Cookies right? of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. And then we went to cheesecake. So I'm still in the creaming mixing method. And realm, you're a teenager. But, you're a teenager. But I don't know still. what's the creaming mixing method until I go oh, to school. You're just doing you know? it. Okay. I'm just yeah. doing it. Scrape, yeah. scrape, scrape. Scrape yep. and scrape some more. <laughs> and the mixer, probably, I think it was an 80 quart mixer, probably bigger than I was at yeah. the time. And when I graduated three years later from high school, uh, they took me to Paris for a food show. No and way, a, really? Yeah, a Parisian yeah. pastry wow. food show extravaganza. She handed me the tickets and I thought, oh, maybe we're going to the Javits Center, you know, Jacob Javits Center in New York. No, yeah, yeah. Pa Paris. So that so was my successful life bakery, right? Evidently successful bakery, yeah. right? Yeah, successful <laughs> okay. bakery, doing yeah. well. And it's my I'm grad. Well, I um, graduated from high school, and that's why they gave me that present. And then okay. They, okay. they helped fund my way into. Uh, I went to the CIA and got my degree there in nineteen uh, blah blah blah. blah, and, blah, then, blah. and then and then I went back. I uh, got another degree from them in the nineties. <laughs> blah blah blah. <laughs> blah blah blah. And then <laughs> no, hey, that, so before you before you jump off that, um wow. Um do you often think of that bakery, the those owners? H oh, had yeah. you had they not given you that ticket? I mean, you weren't yeah. thinking about a career. You were there for three years. That's a long time. I was afraid um, of college. I was. I was afraid okay. to go to college. I had total insecurities about my ability to even attend college. And I was scared of it. And I thought, hmm, culinary school. It's only a two-year commitment, not a four-year commitment. Not too far from home. Yeah. Not too yeah. far from right up the river. Yeah. I came yeah. home most weekends, hung out with my family. But yeah, it was. And, and I think? remember calling. I don't Were know you, what I was thinking, Kirk. I got there I got, and it, it, it <laughs> oh, I don't know what I was thinking. Like I thought maybe it was going to be easy street. And then I realized like in the first six weeks, I call my mom and I'm like, this is not what I thought. Tough. <laughs> and, yeah. And I, yeah. I just about quit in the first six weeks. She, you know, they had been feeding me sweetbreads and foie gras. And I was like, Oh, I just want a hamburger, you know? And <laughs> my mom came to visit. She, you know, she took me right to my favorite fast food joint, got me a hamburger and she's like, get that fix. Yeah. <laughs> look, you can get this fix anytime you want. Now go back in there and figure out how to cook that stuff. And she made me, she made me go back to it. And uh, I love it. I love it. And she, so, you know, she didn't so, let me quit much. It, I, I mean, it's just fascinating. There's a book in here somewhere. It's fascinating. So, so you have this serendipitous experience with this bakery that does obviously very well. They give you this unbelievable gift to Paris. For, for a show, they go with you, right? So they're, yeah. you, you have a chaperone that's showing you around. Did you, do you remember, were you thinking about culinary school before that or did yes. Paris? By then, I, by then I had already okay. applied to culinary school. Got it. Got it. Yep. So I wow. had already applied. You. And then I was like, wow, I should be going to a pastry school, but they didn't have those back in blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so yeah. we had, <laughs> we had to go to culinary school instead and yeah. then when the baking program came around, I, I went back and took that as well. And, and, and then, so, so Paris before CIA or after it's before, before. Okay. Yep. So Graduate now you high school, go to Paris. And then that's that summer, uh, that fall, go to, go to college. You're on cloud nine. You just, I'm so tell, tell us about Paris. You're, you're what? 18, 17, I'm 17. And, um, we just, all I remember was we went to a restaurant called La Tour de Jean and overlooked the Notre Dame. And, just there, just and there. And then we went, I mean. <laughs> you were, La Tour de Jean? Oh, at Notre My. Dame. Oh. No, no, both. Both are both. like classic Paris yes. destinations, and Then right? I went to Pre Catalan in some park. I don't remember. Uh, and then it was just patisserie to boulangerie 
to the charcuterie. It was just from one beautiful shop to the next. I mean, yeah, artistry yeah. And, and I love the culture of France. I'm obsessed with the culture of France. Yeah, yeah. My, one of my best friend lives in the South of France and I go visit her there in Aix in Provence. And okay. that's an artist's dream city. It's, sure, um, sure. Just, Julia Child thought so. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's amazing <laughs> there. And so it was a special trip. And I've been back to France some um, three times since then. Okay. And just got just got back from a trip to London, which the food for me was not as good there, but uh, I love the French culture. Getting better, getting better, right? According yeah, to, the, to Stanley Tucci, getting better, right? Okay. All right. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's there's a lot of culture there, and I love that. That's I loved growing up outside of New York City because of the culture. Sure. You know, people around you, there's 10 different people speaking different languages. And I love that. Like, who, where are you from? Where are you from? I like meeting people, traveling. So you're going to culinary school and yeah. you're excited about the, the pastry part of the curriculum and all of that. And so, so pick up Actually, from there. You know, I, I was, I thought this, the culinary side was pretty fascinating. I especially loved when I got out of all those intro classes and got into basics and started getting my hands on knives and uh, yeah. making soup and learning about the mother sauces um, because I thought this is something you'll never lose. You'll always have this with you. Um, I can still cook today because I went to the culinary program, even though I wanted to be in pastry. And the difference there is that your internship is halfway through instead of mm -hmm. at the end. And so you, I went to this uh, French restaurant called the Hohokus Inn in Hohokus, New Jersey. <laughs> and uh, the um, that that internship then led me back to school where my very first class was um, baking with Rudy okay. Lang. I'll never forget Rudy Lang. You give the bread the Hawaiian punch. Don't forget the punch. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned how to make bread from Rudy Lang. Um, and then oh. I went into the pastry class and that's where I thrive. That's, you know, cakes, chocolates, candies, sugar, anything. Um, and as I began, I'm going to just jump forward a little bit because as I began teaching that craft of sugar pulling and chocolate making and wedding cakes, uh, I began to realize, as you said in the beginning, we can't be perfect. You need to ditch the perfection idea. Yeah. And um, I would tell my students, we need it good and fast, not slow and perfect. Okay. We must not try to obsess on the slow and perfect nature of things. We have to move the, the world's moving way too fast for that. We have to, we have to move quicker. So. And how do students react to that? Um, they like it because it helps them to lower their stress. Remember I'm, I come from this high stress, low self-esteem kind of place where I'm trying to build people up, mostly myself at the same time yeah. to like, life is how you react to it. It's, you know, it's not because a lot of people come in, this happened to me, that happened to me. I'm like, I know, but Let's focus on the good. What happened that was good that came from that? You know, we've all had trauma. We've all had experiences that are hard, but we get through it. We're here post pandemic talking and, uh, you know, we're going yeah. out again. And so I think that it's about forgiveness, that instant forgiveness that um, uh, I'm trying to think. Greg Bell talks to us about. Yeah. Right. Yeah, instant yeah. forgiveness. Uh, yeah. Just allow yourself to not to be imperfect because yeah. it, it's going to weigh you down. You need to love yourself exactly the way you are. And mistakes That's, are okay, right? Both yeah. both practically and spiritually, right? Um, right. And so that led me okay. to my 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 catchphrase of of life is that sugar happens. <laughs> okay. And it does indeed. And that, <laughs> and that we have to um sometimes camouflage the sabotage. Okay. You know, so the, uh, because life is full of sabotage and there's sometimes it's self-sabotage. We do it to ourselves sure, sometimes. Sure. And that's the part that everyone's like, but this happened and that happened. You know, these, we call them the excuses. Um, but <laughs> it's how you react to what happened that really matters. So changing your, your shift and your focus of your mind to say, it's okay that I totally dropped this cake on the ground <laughs> and now it's ruined. That's okay. Like people will forgive. We lead with compassion and empathy. Do you, do you and, find that there's more personal satisfaction for you in the example of a student who is just spectacular from day one, right? Like you, or that, that student who has struggled 
but somehow got through that because of your guidance and, and maybe not be, not perfect, maybe not even an A student, but somehow overcame what was preventing You're going to make me cry, Kirk. I, I mean, I, you see the Mission tissues? accomplished. You see there we me go. with there the tissues? There we go. No, I <sighs> love the passion. Got me it's on a, my MO. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Uh, I like I love- the ones, I like both. I'm not yeah. going to say I don't like both, um, but there certainly is that amazing satisfaction of helping someone get to a goal they didn't see themselves accomplishing and helping them to accomplish that goal when they had given up all hope otherwise. And, you know, the two young ladies messages that I shared with you yesterday, uh, (laughs) you know, just between us, they changed my life, those kinds of conversations. So yeah, yeah. now you're going to make me cry. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my lead, my lead called me and said, well, where were you? I said, I couldn't, I couldn't, I was on with a student. I'm sorry. I was just dedicated to that student in the moment. And I had to be there. He's yeah. like, oh, I thought you were doing the book, but you know, I, love I just, I love, I love my students, love my students. So you're in Paris. Let's go back to Paris for a minute. Um, and that the first time go to mm-hmm. CIA, do the internship. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, then you dive into the, in, into the industry. I, I, I want to, um, um, here's where you have to kind of look, look into your soul. So you were on a path, but when was that moment? These are the fascinating comments I'd love to hear from chefs. When was that day? And I can share you mine. When was that day? Even if you've been in the industry for a bit, when was that moment when you knew something happened, whatever it was, that this was what, what you were meant to do? This was your mm. destination. Was there that? Was it in the kitchen, in the bake mm. shop? To walking down the street maybe it was the moment when my 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 students skipped school so they could come see me in a food network competition and they cut class and they drove 11 hours through the night to denver colorado so they could sleep in the parking lot and surprise me in the morning with chills their joyous chills. their joyous love you know they those are the moments that I know I'm meant to be a teacher. What a beautiful um, moment. Wow. Because I, yeah. I think I've been a teacher longer than I've been a chef. And all okay. of my notoriety came while I was a teacher. Yeah. And that always remained my um, guiding light. You know, I, oh, geez, here come the tears, Kirk. What are you going to make me cry for? <laughs> um, no, what a beautiful but- story though, right? Because it's selfless, right? It's it's unapologetic. It's vulnerable. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I didn't expect you to say that. That I should have expected you to say that. <laughs> and I'm glad you said that, right? 11 yeah. students hop in their cars, drive from the Phoenix Scottsdale I- area to Denver to see. When they cut my class, it was my class that they cut, you know, and I said, you're supposed to be there taking an exam. Of course you did. Yeah. Chef, come on. We thought we'd come here. Let's go. Let's win. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. Hey, I have to ask real quick and we'll come back to it. Um, because it's always really interesting to me when you were a student, going to Paris, all that stuff. What was your kind of favorite thing to make? And what's your favorite thing to make today? And is it the same? Oh, it might be. Uh, I like making eclairs. I find the eclair oh. to be the perfect pastry. French eclairs uh, or German? French. Four skinny inches, versus what? Skinny, four <laughs> inches. Yeah, they have to be, or off with your uh, head. <laughs> I love it. The, I love it. You know, yeah, back in the day, yeah. that's how the no, eclairs no, had that's... to be. Everything was precision. And I think I, as you mentioned, I like mise en place. I'm big into preparation. And so um, preparation calms me down yeah. because I'm a nervous yeah. soul. And so I get calm when I prepare. It takes the anxiety out, right? It, it, it does. Just, Cause you're like, okay, yeah. do we have everything? Do we have everything? You check, you check, you triple check, you double check, quadruple check all the checks. And that, yeah. that's that calm. I, it sounds a little OCD actually, now that I say it out loud, like <laughs> check, check and check and check. No, but it's, yeah. it's interesting. This whole thing. I think, you know, my, my, my father is a, you know, a meister, right? So if I'm yes, master yes. The, through the German style or process, but he used to, and, and it, it I never knew why he used to always kind of challenge me on what ifs. So you open for service. What if the oven doesn't work? What mm-hmm. if the water 
stops working? <laughs> what mm. if the electricity goes down? What if the buttercream doesn't set? What, what, you know, what if, what if, what if, what if, right? And I'd always be like, yeah, dad, I'm going to go on the other side of the bench. I'll just be over here cooking. And, but mm -hmm. it, it all, it didn't make sense then, but it totally makes sense now. You've got to be prepared. That removes some of the anxiety, right? Yeah, I had a baseball yeah. coach that used to say the same thing, right? What are you nervous about? You're ready. You were, mm -hmm. You're ready. You're prepared. Yeah. You can have anxiety, but don't be nervous. You're prepared. I remember my, my brother said um, while we were competing in Atlantic City for our very first like national title that we won and he said it was so crazy watching you. it was like a choreographed dance you guys were just flowing and floating and like like cogs of the wheel my husband and i right we compete together and uh it's <laughs> once we get once they turn the clock on and they say go you know 13 hours eight hours or 13 hours whatever it is you just you're only nervous up to the moment to when they say go and then once yeah. they say go you're like Okay, here we go. We have a plan. It's written down. It's color coded. It really was color. It's like running a race, right? Yeah. You just, you just let's go. As Tom Brady yeah, says, you just go for it. I love the that. way that so, I figured out. Well, I'm, I should probably hold that the thought I have for when you start getting into those competitions, but I will. I will well, well let, you, let's go there. Let's go there. You've had a lot of success, obviously. Uh, jingling there next to you. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, I'm going to need to call it's my first say, hey, one. Listen, let's 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 get these into a frame. Come on now. No, I know. I know. Them off Would the you? hanger. <laughs> Can we do that? Can we put it on the wall? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Right next, I... right next to Camelback there. Yeah. But yeah. so tons of success. Food Network Challenge, National Bread and Pastry Championships. I boy, that just brought back a memory. I remember. Oh my gosh, I remember that. Um, World Pastry Team Championship, first mm -hmm. place, gold, mm -hmm. silvers. What, what, um, and I know you're going to take this, you're going to go with this Nashville story. I know you are, but um, what draws you to competition? Cause it's, it's different and there's different levels of competition, right? But coup de or versus culinary Olympics, it's two different mindsets. But what draws you, Chef Tracy, to co competition? Other than a phone call from me. <laughs> yes, I'm going to blame it all on you, Kirk Bachman, because Kirk is to blame for all of this nonsense. Uh, Kirk, you showed up at my school one day at Le Cordon Bleu of Scottsdale, and I said, oh, you want to see my sugar work? And I brought you over, and I started pointing out all my sugar sculptures to you, and you're just the kind of guy that remembers that stuff. And then yeah, a couple yeah. months down the road, someone calls you because you're important and they call you, Kirk, we need help. We need the chef. Uh, someone dropped out of this competition and we need you to help us out. And you thought, who should I call? And you said, I'll call. I think you called Rick Exley and, and said, uh, is Tracy interested? Does Tracy want to, does she want to do this competition? But nobody told me it was Food Network. Nobody <laughs> told me that Susan Notter would be there. Um, you know, my, one Idol. of my idols. Yeah, and, yeah. And no one told me that, you know, it was going to be on television. I have to fly to Memphis, Tennessee. So not Nashville, Memphis. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yes, 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 yes. And, and, and we'll uh, know why in a minute. Yeah. And yeah. I was and I was slotted. There were five, five competitors and I was slotted for fifth place. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. There, I'm the nobody like because managing the person, your expectations. I'm right? the yeah. person <laughs> filling in at the 11th hour who's, by the way, never done a competition like that. Yeah, I have never, yeah. never done one. I went to my dad for inspiration. He, uh, he went to Juilliard School of Music, uh, a blind pianist and conductor, my dad was. And he, um, he's always just been that source of inspiration for me. Mm -hmm. And um, so I decided to make my first show piece a metronome because I wanted it to like tick tock back and forth. I just wanted that movement and that beat and the rhythm because I grew up with that. My dad played the piano my whole life, uh, forced me to play the piano. No, he didn't force me. He asked me to play the piano for a while and I quietly retreated from that. But these kind of competitions, you can't really retreat from because you locked in and you got an air, airfare and you're getting ready to go. And what happened was that the, the guy who was supposed to win the competition, the number one, his showpiece fell to the floor. And this is what happens in sugar work, right? Mm -hmm. One little vibration, the whole thing implodes. And 
then Susan Notter, who was slotted probably to beat him for the first spot, uh, then her showpiece broke. And I'm like, look at that. I'm in third place already. Podium, you know? just like that. Went, and guess what place <laughs> I finished in, Kirk? Third place. Okay. So we know where I started. I had to get my bearings. <laughs> it was a rough competition. My showpiece also broke. But the difference is that I caught it. I was standing on a ladder and I heard it, I heard it snap and I held it in my hands and I looked and I'm on a ladder. So I was like, I can't really, I don't, I don't know how to get down the ladder. And I looked at the cameraman. I'm like, can you hold this for me? He said, no, I'm not allowed to hold that. <laughs> well, what good are you? So I climbed down the ladder with the thing in my hand and I managed not to fall myself or it. And then I put it back up and I got a bronze medal and it's in my pile here in the pile <laughs> i love it i just love it T um, tell me about the did you have time time to be that, nervous that's what oh well yeah i was really nervous even through the through that whole thing but were you okay. what i realized was that um they were like really interested in what i was doing maybe because i was new or i was the underdog and these people show pieces had just fallen but they the cameras were all on me and then all of a sudden there was a crash and the cameras went running and i was like oh so if you break something they come running so i took a piece of sugar and i threw it on the ground and i made a made a noise and then some cameras came back and so i i i figured out the game pretty quick so um i did get some pretty good airtime in the beginning <laughs> i did I even not up, know that you did i even that. made up a story That's... for the next competition uh it was a 10 days later, they called me 10 days later and said, yeah. we need you back for a gingerbread. Again, 11th hour, we need you in 10 days to come. And I was like, whoa. And I remember going to that one. And I said to my friend, we've got to make drama. You have to create drama for this to be good and them to the cameras. So I getting we got fourth place that was our drama right there fourth place we got no medals we got sh shut out but um no i i accidentally uh decided to put this plan together that we would take our gingerbread and show up with the cameras that it was all broken not a lie it actually did break in transit <laughs> but we rebaked it all at her uncle's house we rebaked everything i can't tell you how many competitions stuff has broken on the drive up my husband sure. and I were on our yeah. way to Denver and a, and a deer ran in the road and all of our chocolate stuff broke. And we were in the hotel with hair dryers trying to melt chocolate and floating bowls in the bathtub, trying to create double boilers Unbelievable. and, you know, have boards on the carpet, trying to remake our roller coaster at the last minute. I mean, it was just one. I just, I love that another. example. Chill, chills, chills for sure. When you mentioned that you, you noticed that the camera followed the drama. <laughs> he threw some <laughs> sugar, sugar on the ground. Absolutely brilliant. But you're 100% right that they want drama. They want oh, yeah. things oh, to, yeah. to go wrong and right. Right. And so. my, my storyline within the food network carried on into further competitions. They started to develop, um, my own food network rival. Um, and he and I were in the chocolate competition, which the, the judge said, well, I don't think the showpiece really makes me happy. She was talking about my showpiece. And I was like, oh, it's seven feet of chocolate with a little moving roller coaster. What, what could not make you happy with this? And, you know, I ended up losing that competition. Like second place, you don't win anything for second place. You don't get a whole lot of notoriety for second place. Um, but we developed a rivalry. And I, yeah. I said to the gentleman who won, um, I said, maybe they're going to have a rematch. And he said, I, I want you on my team. I don't want to compete against you again. <laughs> and I thought that was a great compliment. So it wasn't a rivalry that I thought it was. It was a fabricated rivalry by the Food Network to, you know, create drama for us. I love it. And but that was a time when the Food Network was really starting to kind of not necessarily move away, but it wasn't Emerald and Bobby Flay anymore. It was, it was people that we didn't know coming in and competing and and i mean everyone watched the food network for for a yeah. decade right every yes. single day yeah. yeah what was there ever a time so whether you're in the bathroom trying to create a, a double boiler or <laughs> reconstruct things after a deer runs across the road um 
and this is a message your students will hear, did you ever want to quit? So many times. I think the, the biggest time I wanted to quit was for the 2006 National Bread and Pastry Championship. We practiced our showpiece. We had to make a, a bread showpiece and a cho half chocolate, half sugar showpiece. So my husband made the bread showpiece and I made the sugar chocolate showpiece. And then besides that, we had to do plated desserts, cakes, entremets, frozen entremets, bonbons, you know, Danish bread, you name it, the whole, the whole shebang. And, you know, we get 13 hours to do that. Um, and I think that that competition, oh, what was I going to say about that? Now I just lost it. Um, quitting, quitting the, the idea thank you, of yeah. quitting. Yeah. That competition, we practiced 12 times and my showpiece broke seven out of 12. The first seven times I made it, it never made it to the table. I would, and this was a five foot sugar sculpture and I, we would move it. And as soon as I'd land, it would implode on my head. And it was so discouraging. Like, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not an engineer. I can't figure this out. But my, my student who was very interested in what I was doing and she came to every practice that I had, she kept me so organized. Thank you, Mary Pat Meir. Uh, she and her husband, David Meir would film us and they would film every practice that we did from start to finish. Wow. Wow. Everyone and they give us CDs of it. He filmed us moving the showpiece and he realized with slow motion analysis where our weak spots were. And he said, just put a little padding on that spot. That's where it keeps breaking. And he was an engineer. So he, that's what we did. We listened to him. We put some little putty, putty and glue right there. Wow. And it never wow. broke again after that. And so I just thought, you know, you're just one little putty nugget away from figuring this out. Yeah. Yeah. And How so brilliant though to be filming, like, yeah. you know, it's just like the athletes, right? They're constantly filming their, their style so that they can improve. Do you, you think, evaluate. Do, you think, do you think competition in general? Um, well, I shouldn't say it that way. How do you believe competition can impact a chef's career, pastry or cuisine? Well, I mean, it oh. just opens up a network of people that you didn't meet. You didn't know last month, but suddenly you're in an arena okay. with them. Yeah. So you're, yeah. And you're with the best of the best. And I remember working at Le Cordon Bleu that every summer during the World Pastry Forum, when all the teams that represented the various uh, nations in this, in this world would come together and compete and they would use our kitchens at the school to practice. Mm -hmm. And so I watched them and learned how to set myself up. I looked at their mise en place. I looked how they prepared for the competition. It was all about speed. Every time we practice, you know, the, we have eight hours to do the competition. The first time we practice, it might take us 35 hours to do it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't include just all the planning, but just like, okay, first raw run, let's try it. Can you do it in eight hours? Nope, still here 23 hours later, still working on it. <laughs> um, but then the next time we did it, we get it down to, 28 hours, 23 hours, 21 hours, 18 hours, 15, you know, like each time we practice, we could get it a little tighter. And therefore we could do everything we set out to do because we put a lot on our plate, no pun intended to, you know, compete hard, you know, like compete to win. I got the judge's vote. The carnival cruise judge, she she was like, oh, you had me at ship when I made her a big giant sugar cruise ship. <laughs> um, and I, because I didn't make the Hershey judge happy, I realized I had to make the carnival cruise judge happier. And that's how I would win. So there was, it's, it's so, I think competitions are less about um, getting your technical skills down and more about meeting people. It's about networking and meeting people. That's what it's about for if me. You with so much experience and, you know, I, I, I can recall Jackie Pfeiffer's, there's a documentary when he was working on getting his MOF and what people don't realize is they just see the finished product. You're there. You are in the, in the, in the show, in, in the kitchen, in the hall or whatever it is going to work. What they don't realize is driving to Denver, swerving to miss a deer, getting on the plane, all this other stuff. If you could create, your own competition, what would that look like? 
Well, it goes back to inclusivity and wanting everybody who can't afford to compete to be able to compete. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would want to make it uh, so that everybody could have access to the same equipment, access to the same food, the same supplies and the same space to practice, uh, maybe even a set number of times. Like, okay, it's an even playing field. Mm-hmm. Because often mm-hmm. when I would go to the, some of my competitions, like at the Food Network, I found myself way more prepared than most people there. And they're like, wow, this is our first time trying it. I'm like, what? This is your first time trying this showpiece on television? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, wow. I, don't ha- I just don't have that kind of confidence. I, I can't do that. I would be so scared to put myself out there and not be prepared. So it, I guess um, my parents must have instilled this incredible work ethic in me to find that level of preparedness. Well, and, and of I think to- my culinary schooling did that as well. Well, and to level the playing field, like you said, some some people have the opportunity and some don't, right? You right. you you had the good fortune of being a a chef instructor with access to, you know, right. a kitchen and such, and some don't have that. You know, we should talk about um, I think perfect time to segue to, you know, the fact that it's pretty clear to our viewers that you're very passionate about <laughs> educating just educating period, but, you know, specifically the next generation of, let's say, culinary professionals, right? You have this electric personality that the Food Network saw, (laughs) even the, the, the cute little, you know, action of throwing some sugar on the ground because you were like, look at me, look at me. Right. But I'm the, I'm the youngest child of three. I was always looking for that attention. Pay attention to me. Yeah. Pay attention to Tracy. I love that. And, and, and your motto coming back to the intro of creating, and you just mentioned it again, this inclusive space where everyone's voice can be heard. You know, it's pretty clear that that's indicative of the type of person you are, not just educator, but the type of person you are. What is it, Chef, that you love, truly love about teaching? Changing lives. Yes, And, and, and offering hope that your dreams can come true as long as you stay the course. <laughs> Don't quit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay the course. It, Don't quit. It's the course hard is tough. Sometimes, yeah, the course is tough. All courses are tough. I mean, they, it's a gauntlet. No matter what course you're on, it's a it's a gauntlet of whoa, what's happening? What's coming? Whoa, that's a lot to take in. But one goal: changing lives. Um, I, I, I mean, that that says a lot. So. It, when it comes to your years of experience teaching at the institutions where you taught, and and now we're so fortunate to have you at Escoffier, um, this is a tricky question, right? What have you learned from your students, perhaps that makes you the educator that you are today? My students have taught me that I'm enough, that I don't have to be perfect. I can, I can come in fourth place at a gingerbread competition and still be okay with it. (laughs) Um, That, you know, I don't go, I don't go and compete because I want to win. I actually go there because I want to push myself and I want to make, make myself better. Mm -hmm. And it's hard on the body. You know, it's, it's a rough haul doing those kinds of competitions, but um, I was able to bring all that knowledge back to my students and say, again, I'm going to tell you all, it's not as much about the technique, although we all are, you know, technique, 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 but it's also about allowing yourself to break some sugar every once in a while. You know, (laughs) when, when the competitions were over, I asked my students, Hey, would you guys clean up the mess if I took a baseball bat to my show pieces right now? Because they, they'd be lined up in the hallway, like one, two, three. You saw them. You were there. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're like, yes, chef, we'll do it. And I was like, great. And so we got the baseball bat out. And boom, 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 boom. It felt so good. I don't know why, but all that hard work, just like I conquered it. I conquered it. I conquered it. And I was scared to death through the whole thing. Do you remember, um, and that, not that, I mean, the journey is 
a big piece of it. It's kind of cool to get the W, right? It's okay to get mm. the win. Do you, yes. do you remember when you got the first gold and how you felt? Oh, yeah. Well, I thought we were destined for fourth place at that moment because, <laughs> you know, they announced who, they announced the third place and then they announced second place. Who, and I thought they, the second place was winning. I thought they were going to win. So then I'm like, wait a minute. This feels very familiar, mm -hmm. like the gingerbread competition where I was like, it's either first or fourth. I mean, there's five people here. So you, you kind of can do the math. And my husband said he knew right away because all the cameras came and shifted and locked in on him and uh, and my and me too but i wasn't paying attention and he he noticed that all the cameras just sort of turned towards us for a minute and so he knew before they announced it but i was blindsided i did not i had no idea we were going to win that one um and i remember my talking to one of my judges on day two and i said chef i'm so sorry i left the rubber spatula in the bowl in the freezer and he's like yeah i saw it and I was like, oh God, he's, he saw it. Oh God, what else did he see? You know, I'm always freaking out. And at the end of the competition, when it was all over and we'd won, he's like, if you could have seen some of those other kitchens, like he was laughing at me because it's yeah, like, spatula. Yeah. <laughs> like, did I prepare for my uh, meeting today, Kirk? You know, like, <laughs> did I, did I do right? Did I get enough? Did I do? I'm always trying to over prepare and make no, sure I, that I love that about bases. you. What'd you tell your students after you got the, the, the first <sighs> place? I was, I'm still sort of in shock. And then once yeah. you get a gold medal at a national title, then you're eligible to compete at other you know, yeah, national yeah, competition. Yeah. So that opened up all kinds of people calling me. Can you compete for us? You know, I recently got a call from Disney plus asking me to do a competition. Oh. And I was like, Oh, you're killing me. You're killing me. Smalls. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I can do that right now, but that's just because of life circumstances. Right. I mean, life has shifted for me into a different phase yeah, of life. Yeah. And, um, you're, you know, you're giving, have... you're giving back constantly. Well, you have been for a long time. Is there one thing, or are there some things, um, that you see with your students today that maybe you didn't get advice on or, or like, man, I wish, I wish someone would have told me that because it would have saved some time or, or as you look back, you know, I'm good. I'm good. My, well, my I, journey was fine. I, as I grow older and realize the repercussions of this kind of a career um, <laughs> on your feet all day, squeezing the piping bag, frosting the cakes, you know, you get a little tendonitis in the shoulder, you got arthritis in the wrist, you know, carpal tunnel sets in and I just can't do as many of the physical things as I used to be able to do. Yeah. Um, Cause blah, blah, so, blah. Yeah. Cause it's been a while. Yeah. It's been blah, blah, blah years of squeezing the piping bag. Um, so I, I was always trying to coach my students into proper sit up straight, hold your bag up. Don't, don't hunch at the shoulder. I was trying yeah. to give them good posture, trying to help their, uh, their physique a little bit to maintain this kind of industry. It's helps fun. the longevity. Yeah. 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 I, I told yeah. you I have names for all the bone spurs on my feet. After each competition, I developed <laughs> little bone spurs. And you named so, them. Yeah. <laughs> I've named them. Yes. And this this might be why the this is the perfect job for me now. <laughs> I love it. You're right. Hey, so we um I I don't know where the time goes, um, both today and just in general. Um, it's been just amazing staying in touch with you over the years. The name of the podcast is the ultimate dish so before i let you go i need to hear it what is the ultimate dish wow i think going off the eclair idea um <laughs> i'm a big fan of ice cream and i love the the craft of just making a simple ice cream because that's the one thing you teach a student they're like that's it it's just the milk the sugar and the egg yolks <laughs> yeah and then you got to churn it so I love making ice cream because there's, you can be so creative with that. And I love pairing it with the perfect 
brownie or um, you know a, a crunchy bar of some sort, you know, like an apple streusel crumble bar with ice cream on it. Oh yeah, nothing better than that. I Warm apple it. pie, vanilla ice cream. I'm settling in on that one. I love it. I did not. I thought we're going sugar. I thought we're in some neighborhood in Paris. I well, absolutely what, love what it. What planet do you live in? And that that's not an amazing dish, apple pie with ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, you know, they make a tarte tan and, you know, all the other um, palm tarts from France. But honestly, you can keep your frangipan. Just just give me a brownie. Hey, do, hey don't your first place. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah. You got it. I believe you. I'm with you. Hey, you know, it's funny. You said milk, sugar, egg yolks. Um, it just reminded me. I, when you were at CIA, I'm sure Ferdinand Metz was there. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm pretty, he and, uh, he did some stuff with us at Cordon Bleu in later years. And I could remember him. He was always engaging around students. And that was one of his go-tos. He'd have a 20 students around him and he would just say, and everyone was nervous, right? Like, who is this guy? And he'd say, if I gave you, if I gave you milk, sugar, and egg yolks, what would you make? And, and oftentimes people were so nervous. They did. They just didn't spit it out. Couldn't think of it. Ice yeah. cream, right? Ice it's cream, a, creme anglaise, uh, uh, creme brulee, flan, uh, shaboos cream, diplomat cream, Bavarian cream. I can keep going. So simple that it's almost it's almost silly, right? I, yeah, I, it's like, I wait, how come we have twenty creams with the same ingredients? Why don't we just call it the cream? <laughs> I love creme. It. I love the apple pie and ice cream. First, yeah. first guest to prepare like you did, and the first guest to come with apple pie and ice cream. I absolutely love. <laughs> yes, it. I'm a simpleton. I love love simple desserts. I love. Don't it. give me more than three flavors. That's that's all I want: chocolate, vanilla. No, two flavors. I want chocolate and vanilla. <laughs> hey, I am so, first of all, grateful for you. So happy that you're with us, that we get to communicate here and there. You look astonishing. You seem so happy. It's great, great, great to see you. Thank you for, for joining us for, for a few minutes today. I really, really appreciate it. I adore you. Thank you, Kirk. I adore you as well. And I want to thank you for helping me. You don't even know that you helped me with my career, that you were the reason that my life took off in that direction. It changed my life forever. And I always will be grateful to you, Kirk. So thank you. Well, you, you were always throwing sugar on the floor. So I had to do something. <laughs> I was throwing it at you. You better put me on TV, Kirk. <laughs> oh, no, I, thank you. I thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And I know that your heart is in the right place. And you just want to bring people together to learn. Indeed, indeed. Thanks and again, I wanna, Tracy. I just want to come together and teach with everybody. So I appreciate you taking the time with me today. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Ultimate Dish Podcast brought to you by Auguste Escoffier School of Culinary Arts. Visit escoffier.edu forward slash podcast, where you'll find any materials mentioned during the podcast, including notes, links, and other resources. You can also browse other episodes and subscribe.